happen to be Tex Haynes, don't you? That's right. And you happen to be a lawyer. Right again. You're our man. You coming along, or do we have to persuade you? Well, uh, are your guns loaded? Sure is. Then I'm persuaded. promised me we'd go bear hunting just as soon as we rounded up them rustlers. That's right, I did, Panhandle. But when a ranger gets orders to report... Yeah, he... I know, I know. He reports. <laughs> Hello, Captain. Hello, boys. Sit down, Dave. Thank you. Hello, Captain. Panhandle? Dave, I'm sorry to spoil any vacation plans that you'd be making, Oh, but... it's my bear hunting you're interfering with by making him report. Well, we'll let you join in on a two-legged bear hunt. That ought to make you happy. Well, it won't. I want to catch me a bear, a four-legged bear. <laughs> Sit down and listen to the captain. Well, this ought to tell you what's in the wind. Well, the only thing I get from this is that Wild Charlie Gray is about to be released from the federal prison. There is more to it than that. There's a story behind Wild Charlie Gray and our new interest in it. An army pay train, half dozen wagons or so, with a small cavalry detachment, were headed west with a shipment of gold coins, a quarter of a million dollars worth. Well, this wild Charlie Gray headed a guerrilla band. He shot up the wagon train and got away with the strong box. But Uncle Sam caught up with wild Charlie and put him where he now is. But they never did find out where he hid the loot. I suppose you want us to sit outside the prison and wait for him to come out. No, I want you to spend a week or two with him as a prisoner in the same cell. Well, that's a good idea, Captain, but don't forget that there's a few hombres there that I sent there. They might recognize me and spoil the game. Yeah, that's so. true. Well... Captain, I ain't never been in prison. I wouldn't even know how to act. Don't let that worry you, Panhandle. No, indeed. You're our man, Perkins. You'll go in there as a prisoner about to be released from another prison. You're spending your last few weeks there. No one will question that. It's done all the time. But what did I do in the first place to get sent to prison? You were the best state tracker in the state until they caught up with you. Get it? No, all I get is the fact that poor old Panhandle Perkins sat for two weeks in a cell with a gorilla. Hey, maybe he ain't even tame yet. <laughs> After all the years he's been there, he's tame. What's the idea? That's what I want to know. Well, I sent three different letters to Mr. Haynes asking him to get in touch with me about some legal matters. But he didn't answer. So I asked the boys to go out and bring him in. <laughs> Sorry if you misunderstood, Tex. Oh, that's all right. I've been away for a couple of months just on the way home when I, when I met the boys. <laughs> First, I knew you wanted to see me. And Dave Wyatt and Panhandle here tells me you have a hot case. Well, a case of a quarter of a million dollars. Uncle Sam wants back in Washington. Well, Uncle Sam, well, count me in. When do we start? Well, now, that's fine. That's what I like to hear. Well, Perkins here will start in prison. Tex, you and Dave will work out your problem any way you two want. But let me tell you, Charlie Gray is no picnic. Well, from what I've heard, neither were his gorillas. <laughs> Panhandle? I hope that prison makes a better man of you. And that they let you out someday. And let's hope they don't forget to let you out. <laughs> now, now, you can't do this to me. Two more 
weeks in this hole for Charlie. That'll make five years. Hey. How long before you parole? Oh, a couple of weeks, maybe. I don't know. You said you was a safe cracker. How come you got caught? Well, the uh, last safe I blew, I uh, put too much soup in. When it went off, it blew me and the safe right through the wall, oh. into the marshal's lap. That was tough luck, pal. I suppose you got a stake in so you can live kind of easy like when you get out. Uh, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> what, chicken feed? That won't last long. Maybe not. Say, uh, how are you fixed? I suppose you've got a stake sorted away to take care of you when you get out. If I have, that's my business. Well, you don't need to get touching. I just thought maybe if you didn't, I could let you have part of mine. <laughs> that's nice of you, Pam, Hannah. Well, where is yours? I hid it in a safe. Where's the safe? Some no-good thief stole it. Oh! Get out, I'm gonna do something for you. Yeah. I got a stake buried. I've just been drawing a map by memory. Hey, you better let me take that map out for you. If they find it on you, you won't have anything left. This is the day we get rid of you. Come on, wake up, wake up. Huh? We're getting out. Put your boots on and come on. Here, come on, put on your boots. Put on your boots. Well, uh, so long, Charlie. Uh, when you get out, look me up. Well, don't leave me, Panhandle. I'll be up in just a few more days and then we can pal together. Uh, get going, Parker. Get going. Charlie, we get rid of you, too. Oh, thank you, thank you. Look, Panhandle, I'm out. I'm out, too. Little stir-crazy. He'll be all right. He ain't dangerous. Oh, we're going to be just like twins, glued together. Come on, Pam. like a reception committee. Yeah, I hope no news leaked out that the Rangers are interested in Charlie Gray. Well, hardly. But just the same, it's a good thing you're working undercover. Now, this is gonna be interesting. The man in the black shirt is Steve Martin. Never thought much of him. He's the uncle of Ruby Martin. I told you about that case before. I wonder how deep he's in with Charlie. I don't know, but we'll find out when we see them all together. Why don't we rush Charlie and knock him off? With his map, we don't need him. How do I know the map isn't buried, the same as the loose? Don't worry, boys. 
We'll all come in for a good slice. Why not all of it? You was with him and he robbed the wagon train. Yeah, but Charlie got caught, and I didn't. Don't you boys worry about Charlie coming out of this with anything, except maybe his boots. <laughs> Just like Daniel going into the lion's den. <laughs> yeah, but Panhandle's going to be harder to digest. <laughs> We're about to give you up, Charlie. Tell your friend here goodbye and let's go. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Steve, meet my pal, Panhandle Perkins. Hi, Steve. Oh, yeah. Wherever I go, he goes. You get it? Not when we dig. Even then. In fact, I wouldn't dig if he wasn't there. All right, Charlie, you're the boss. See, Panhandle, I'm the boss. Yeah, and I'm your pal. Right. We can follow him a little ways together. I got a hunch it's a good thing I'm going to be working close to Panhandle. What's got you all riled up? You and that new gang you're gathering together. Who are the new ones? Jailbirds? They're friends of mine, and you treat them right. We'll see about that. I'm your uncle and your guardian, Ruby. You do as I tell you. Maybe. Well, Charlie, you're looking good after all these years. It's not your fault, Steve, that I'm looking good. Uh, by the way, did I tell you that my friend Panhandle here was one of the best safe crackers in the business until he got caught? Hmm, that's too bad. Let's go in the office where we talk. Are you here to join up with Steve, too? No, ma'am. I don't know no Steve. And I don't join up with nobody. Better to travel alone, I say. Well, you're smarter than you look. I told you a long time ago, Steve, that it was just you and me. And I ain't splitting with nobody else. What kind of a deal is this? Mike and me have been on all of your jobs. We're declaring ourselves in. Now, that goes for me. Steve's been promising us a cut, and we're going to get it or else. You get your cut, all right, from mine, from what Charlie gives me. You boys just didn't understand. Charlie doesn't cut his share with anybody. Well, except me. Uh, ain't that right, Charlie? You bet. I'll take care of you, Panhandle. And Steve can take care of his pals. We're all arguing about something, and only Charlie knows where it's buried. So what do you say? We all have a drink to his findings. <laughs> That's good. Get a bottle of some glasses and hurry it up. Do it yourself, Steve. I'm not waiting on your friends. And another thing, you forget the money my father left me you used to build this place. So don't start giving me orders. Why? Bruce, let me have a... Say, who let you in? Nobody. Door's open. Didn't see no sign saying keep out. Well, get out. He came in looking for work. I was just about to give him a job when you started giving orders. All right. Let him bring in the drink. Well, do you want to work or do you start traveling? You gotta eat. I'll work. Put your pack over there and then take the drinks in. When you come back, I'll show you where you can sleep.
Here's your bourbon, mister. Nobody invited you, so get out. I'll let you know if I want something. Hey, wait a minute. Come in. I'd like to know something about the men working for me. Do you pack a gun? I don't pack nothing I might get hurt with. Well, where are you from? Panhandle, Texas. you take something out of a pack, put it back the way you found it. I didn't mean to look, but I saw the gun barrel sticking out. I'm suspicious of everyone that comes here, even you, mister. A tramp doesn't pack a 45 like yours. This one does, for a reason. A good one? The best. I want to keep on living. Well, so do I. Where's the room? I'll show you. Home. Well, I, I don't see Uncle Steve around, but I'll bet he's here. Mr. Haynes, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. Steve is up to something. More men are moving in here. Three today. Two of them look as if they just got out of prison. And a tramp. What does it mean? Well, I think it means you need a lawyer again. A singing lawyer? Anything to please a lady. Forget how much I love you Now that you've decided we are through You promised if we parted there'd be no regret You taught me how to love you Now teach me to forget Teach me to forget. Bring up, boy, and play more. <laughs> Wait a minute. Till you said you yeah, I've heard that canary before. Free. For all the years I gave you, that's the thanks I give. You taught me how to love you. Now teach me to forget. Teach me to forget the lies you told me. Memories of them haunt me constantly. I'd be much better off if we had never met. You taught me how to love you. Now teach me to forget. Tex Haynes, the lawyer, who took care of roof affairs when they settled their dad's will. Just why does he show up now? Charlie, you and Pan have to keep out of sight. You two come with me. Well, I knew when I saw Miss Lawson that you'd be around someplace. And being her guardian, I have to be. Made a nice investment for her here. Yeah, nice and quiet. Hey, where's that tramp we put to work? Putting his stuff away in the storeroom. I always make sure I can get in and out of a place in case of fire. You don't expect me to believe that, do you? I can't help it if you don't. And let me tell you something else. You didn't fool me that story you told in the office. You're no hobo, and I know it. Out of that pack. 
What are you afraid I'll find? Maggie 20 and the whole bowl for mine. It's a bet. I'll raise you 10,000. Hey. Maybe you've seen those two fights before. No, only one of them. Hold it. I'll take my gun. Martin, this should be your last mistake. The next one will be. I'll remember that, Haynes. And you can bank on my memory. Pack your gear and get out of here. I was just going. Well, get on. cause you any trouble, but I'm a little touchy about people prying into my belongings. You've had your say. Now get out. Thanks for giving me a chance to work for you. If you want to keep healthy, Haynes, stay away from here. Because you picked the wrong side. Well, I intend to keep healthy, Steve. But I'll risk it if Miss Lawson needs any advice. In fact, I may come back and give her some concerning you. I'll be staying in town. You know, it's funny when a lawyer puts away his books for a gun. And right now, he's packing two of them. Why? I don't know. You didn't send for him by any chance, did you? No, but maybe I should have. You owe me $30,000. Now, come on and pay me. My man won. All right, all right. I'll pay you before long. Well, pay me now. I ain't got Shut up, you two. Sell your business outside. There's something up, and I'd like to know just what it is. I don't get you. That hobo that showed up here started a fight when I wanted to look in his bag. Then Tex Haynes, the lawyer, who sometimes works as a special marshal, shows up. And the fact that you just got out, Charlie, all ties together. And I'm beginning to see it. Well, I don't see nothing. Let's get at it, Charlie. Dig up the mat and lead us to the loot. Wait a minute. Not so fast. That loot's been buried a long time. And I got something else to do before I dig it up. That looks nice, don't it? How long you had that? Ever since we held up the wagon train. And you ran out on me. The doctor took the bullet out all right, but the, the scar never went away. What's the scar got to do with us digging up the loot? When I get my hand on that gold, I'm going somewhere. Somewhere where no one ever heard of Charlie Gray. I'm going to change my name. I'm going to have that taken off. And no one can prove who I am. Well, Charlie, if that's all that's holding us up, we'll get your hand fixed tonight. There's a doctor here in town that can take care of it. That's uh, too bad, Dave. Yeah, but I didn't dare let him look on this pack. My ranger identification would have given me away. I thought the best thing to do was fight it out. <laughs> and you did that all right. That's too bad it turned out that way. Yeah, it leaves Panhandle in a tough spot. Well, they won't be long in digging up the loot. Then we can close in and put Charlie back in the cell again.
Yeah, who is it? Well, Charlie, I've got everything fixed. Now you can have that scar taken off the back of your hand that's been bothering you. The doctor's waiting for you in his office. Does he know who I am? No, yeah, he just thinks you're a friend of mine. Somebody that's being bothered by an old wound. Where is he? Michael takes you to the place, but you go in alone. I've got a nice cabin all fixed up for you and Panhandle. Good. And when you get through, we'll get down to the real business, Charlie. And no stalling. Hey, where are you going? Uh, just to get some air. Well, you don't need none. Steve, take care of my friend while I'm gone. Don't let him get out of your sight. He means a lot to you, doesn't he, Charlie? More than anybody knows. Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, I itch. I ain't had a bath since I got out of that penitentiary. Mr. C, how about letting me get one now? Well, you can't take one. Here, wait till Charlie gets back and he gets you out to the cabin. Oh, I'll sure be glad to. You know, my feet been burning me for days. Charlie thinks a lot of you, doesn't he? Sure. We was in that penitentiary together. Cellmate. Well, we like that. Yeah, I bet you know a lot. Like where the loot's hidden, huh? Oh, you can show us Charlie's map. He wouldn't care. Well, you got it on you, haven't you? Well, uh, just between you and me, I ain't never even seen it myself. Charlie, not wanting anything to happen to you, I thought you might be taking care of it for him. Who, me? No, sir. I guess you're my patient. Well, I am if you're the doc. Steve Martin tells me that you're carrying an old bullet scar that's been bothering you. That's right. There it is. Hmm. Been there a long time, hasn't it? Well, you ought to know. You're the one that took the bullet out of there. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I guess I did. Hey. Uncle Sam's looking for quite a bit of money, ain't he? Yeah, according to this report, been almost a million dollars lost here or there. Never been found. I was just reading it when you came in. You wouldn't be interested in finding any particular amount, would you, Doc? No. <laughs> any sum would do me if I could find it. Hmm. Listen. You take that car over there so it can't be seen. I'll pay you more than Steve offered you for the job. All right, let's go to work. Get on that table. I've got to put you to sleep. Well, I guess that's all right. You get that scar off. <laughs> is closed for the night. Yeah, but not to us. I fixed the window in the storeroom so it'll open. Oh, I'm glad you're here. When I saw that gun, mister, I knew you were no tram. We felt you might be needing help. I don't, but that fellow that came here with Charlie will. They won't let him leave. I heard Charlie say he was mighty important to them. Where's Charlie now? He went to see Dr. Carey. There's something up, I know it. Well, don't you worry. We're staying right here. You go back in the saloon. I'm tired of this. I'm getting out of here. Sit down, Panhandle. You ain't going nowhere. Can a man even go out to the bar for a drink? No, you can't. You ain't going no place till Charlie gets back. Hey, uh, why am I so important to Charlie all of a sudden? That's what we can't figure out. Yeah. Do you suppose Panhandle's carrying Charlie's map? 
could be. Maybe that's why he's trying to get away. Charlie back yet? Oh, no. Uh, oh, Steve, do uh, you want another bottle of this? Well, yeah. Sit down, you hungry-looking hombre. You know the kind I want, so get it. Hey, Steve, he's getting tough. Well, Panhandle, you wouldn't leave your old cell mate Charlie, would you? I'd even leave myself. And I will, too, if I don't get a bath. Well, wait till Charlie gets back. And you and all the rest of us will go places. And then you can drown yourself. Well, sure like that. Why? Well, I can't feel a thing, Doc. Did you get the car off? Well, we'll know for sure in about a week when you take the bandage off. That's all. Good night. Wait a minute. That's not all. You know too much. Well, you recognized me the minute I came in here tonight. And you know why I'm back here now. That's right, Charlie. A lot of people knew you a while back. They'll know you again, no matter where you go. No. With this car gone, nobody can prove who I am. And you're not going to be here to tell them. Find him in the office. Charlie, looks like the doctor picked you up all right. You didn't have any reason for sending me to that particular doctor, did you, Steve? Well, he's the only one in town. You mean was? Well, he's the guy that took the bullet out of there that made the scar. Well, he got rid of the scar for you, didn't he? Yeah. And I got rid of him permanently. You killed him? You know I did. Hear that? Murder kind of changes things, Dave. Yeah. Nothing to do now but arrest him. You're under arrest, Charlie. Steve, letting the killer get away. What are you talking about? You just heard Charlie say he'd killed the doctor. So what? Where do you come in? You'll find out after we take Charlie. job on your hands, Sheriff. Charlie Gray out of prison on parole. Killed Dr. Cater tonight. And Steve here made it possible for him to escape when I tried to arrest him. He says he's a ranger. Dave Wyatt out of Norwalk. And you? Tex Haynes, the lawyer. Just passing through. I'll call on you men later. Don't leave town. Don't worry. We won't. I'll tell you the same, Steve. Stay in town. See you later, Steve. Stay in town? You bet we will. 
until we can get our hands on Charlie's bankroll. Where to? Hold up for the night. We'll pick up Panhandle's trail in the morning. Take me a bath. A bath? Are you crazy? Do you want to catch pneumonia? Well, I always take a bath. You're the scaredest man of water I ever saw. I nearly drowned once. Well, a trail of white beans leads to that cabin. Yeah. Panhandle's gonna growl for months about having to use them to mark the trail. <laughs> Hey, that looks like him at the window now. It is. I wonder what he threw out. I don't know, but one of us better go up there and see. I'll get it. You keep me covered. Outside a pair of rolled up socks. I wonder why. <laughs> Too lazy to wash them, I guess. <laughs> One of them looks like a pin wiper. Let's close in and get Charlie. All right. Still think you're loco, raving about a map. Well, I ain't never had a map on. Yes, you did. You didn't know it. But when you was asleep, I printed it on the bottom of your foot. And you wiped it off. The one I copied it from, I tore it up. So I lose a quarter of a million dollars. Well, I ought to blast you. Drop it, Charlie. You heard me, I said drop it. You ain't gonna shoot me, Ranger. If you do, I'll shoot this no good in front of me. Oh, don't do that. Well, I guess you win, Charlie. You're gonna hang for one murder. We can't repeat it for a second. I ain't gonna hang at all. 
You're not going to get very far, Kelly. That scar on your hand makes it easy to identify you. <laughs> there ain't no scar on my hand. Then I'll put one there. Come in. All right. But I tell you, I ain't got nothing on my hand. Except where I burned it a little last night. And you've got a surprise coming, Charlie. Start unwinding that bandage, and you will find out that a scar like yours can never be removed. <laughs> That dirty double crosser. He said he took it off. Well, he got what was coming to him. You're gonna get what's coming to you too, Charlie. A rope. Come on. You too. We got a lot of work to do. You're putting yourself into a tough spot, Steve. Not half as tough as the spot you two will be in when I get back. No, well, I'm glad to hear you're returning. I thought maybe for a minute you were clearing up. I never leave unfinished business. And I'll be back to finish you two. That ought to take care of them. Well, come on, panhandler. I'll be you and my pal. stick to my law books. You know, Charlie said he'd drawn the map on one of Panhandle's feet. Why, that's it. What's it? The map, the key to Uncle Sam's treasure. It's on one of Panhandle's socks. Uh, you guessed it when you said it looked like a pin wiper. And you threw it away. Well, that's all right. We're getting out of this right now. Turn around. This is far enough. All right, Charlie, let's have the map. There ain't no map now. I printed it in ink on the bottom of his foot, and he wiped it off. Well, I didn't even know it was there. Was the ink still wet when you pulled on his sock? Yeah. Well, then we're all right. The map will be in reverse on the bottom of the sock. That's right. Get off and take off your boots. Oh, no. Oh, come on, pal. Get down. Well, uh, for you, I'll do it, Charlie. <laughs> Sit down now, we get the boots off. No, no, I don't want to, oh, Charlie. Come on, you know? come on. No, I don't want to. Oh. Oh. Well, there's not a sign of ink. Wait, I remember. Them are not the socks. The ones we want, he threw out the cabin window. I think the thing we wanted, you threw in a bush. That's all right. We know where to find it. Hey, Dave. Ah. Just what I needed. Well, it won't be bad after a wash them. We better get him before something happens to those socks. Ain't no socks there. 
Then somebody picked them up. Those rangers still inside of their horses wouldn't be here. Let's follow those tracks. comes back to me now. I know exactly where the loot is. Come on. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? You're all local in this country? Can a guy wash a pair of stocks without being beat up about it? Not the ones we want. Where's the mate of that stock? Well, you'll have to ask the hombre to take it away from me. Hey, Dave, what's this? Well, you see, the road, the big tree, the building and the cross in the center. Yeah, that's it, all right, as sure as we're here. Just for us to be Charlie to it now. carrying around a quarter of a million dollars and didn't even know it. You are sick when you can carry that around with you and not know it. Sick in the head. No, but you don't understand. I've had the map to Charlie's loot on my foot all the time, and I wiped it off. Uh, give me a glass of buttermilk, will you? You'll need something stronger than that when Charlie catches up with you. Oh, I know that. I'm a dead monkey. No, I'm not. I'm a live ranger. Say, where's the chair? Uh, excuse me, uh, I've got to bump into the sheriff right away. Well, who do you think you just bumped into? I'm the sheriff. Well, well, I'm a ranger. You're my prisoner. You came to Red Dog with the man who killed Doc Kerry. Hold on there a minute. No sheriff arrests the ranger. Now, you just back up there and listen to me. Finish our talk over at the jail, Ranger. Hey, how can we get out of here without them seeing us? Through that door, out through the storeroom window. Did you build this? Yeah. Over an old excavation? Sure, it saved me building a cellar. 
I've got it. Come on. Go home and start packing my things. Here. Well, there's a trap door to the cellar right there. Good. Now, let's get one thing straight. What's the matter, Charlie? You worried about the split? Yeah. Now, what's buried down here is mine and yours. But you take care of the boys out of your head. Get it? Sure, Charlie. Anything you say. I'll take care of Red and Mike and all the rest, if that's what you want. That's just what I want. Get a light and a shovel. Wait a minute. I'll do this alone. Charlie's been waiting a long time for this, boys. We'll wait up here. Close the trap. Let's have a drink. Set him up. Charlie doesn't know it, but that hole he's digging down there is his grave. Well, here's to that. Charlie tells us he's got it. Help him up with the box and then keep out of range. You get it? I hope he digs that hole deep enough for himself. If he don't, I will. He's in a hurry. These rangers are too close for comfort. They're making me nervous. They're still tied up where we left them. I got it. Give me a hand to get it up. Hold it, Steve. That goes for you too, Red. Well, you're just in time, Sheriff. These men will stand trial for attempting to steal United States property. Ah, oh, Panhandle, you're a pal to stick by me this way. Now we gotta hide the box. I know just the place. But I ain't gonna take you there unless you're blindfolded. The way you've been fighting for me, I'll do anything you say. Go ahead. Oh. 
Get over to the jail, you. Put it down, Charlie. We're safe. Oh. You can take the blindfold off now. Oh. Panhandle, you're the best cellmate a guy ever had. Cellmate is right. Wait. Panhandle, how do we get in here? Would you blindfold it too? And over the guns, Panhandle. Hey, wait a minute now. Hey, you can't do this to me. I want a lawyer. Well, Tex is a lawyer. He'll advise you. Well, let me see. Both out on parole. Parole broken. Charlie's added murder to his charge. Hmm. Panhandle. The only way I can see for you to get out Panhandle is to get a pardon from the governor. Uh, but the governor's gone fishing and he won't be back for a month. Hey, wait a minute. Now, you, you can't do that to me. We're doing it. Tex, why don't you think where the phone? All right. And uh, in the meantime, I'll figure out what to do with Panhandle. Whether he'll get the uh, life or the rope. You will have to pay for your yesterday. You'll be living all alone. Tender vows you grow, unkind words you spoke. You'll recall them when I'm gone. I was good to you. to please every way You walked on my heart Broke it all apart But someday you'll have to pay You will have to pay For your yesterday It will all come home to you Pay for your sin time and time again. I won't even pity you. You can never be quite the same to me. And I'm so glad I can say I don't worry now. My heart's free somehow, but someday you'll have to pay. <laughs> well, come on, Tom, <laughs> That's all. Good work, Ranger. Him a Ranger? The cut of his clothes or the gift of his gab. <laughs> Don't you worry. I never will again. Where you're going, you won't get the chance. <laughs> Steve, for your part in this, you'll get 20 years at least. Ruby will get possession of her property again. So long, boy. Say, Hamill, don't go away and leave me here. Well, Ruby, place of business is all yours once again. Yes, thank you, sir. And you, Rangers, I hear Steve is going away, and his pal Charlie with him. For a long time. For a long, long time. Well, the longer the better suits me. <laughs> <laughs>